Today we're going to talk about the future of emergency, off-grid, and recreational use backup power supplies, which are noiseless for good operational security, which can operate indoors, are portable, modular, infinitely upgradable, and entirely maintenance-free. Let's get to it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So if you're somebody who is directly impacted by the current economic crisis that we're all facing due to the lockdowns, then the first thing you need to do is turn this video off and go and buy some food and a shotgun because you're probably gonna need it. If you got one of those stimulus checks and you're still doing okay and you're trying to find something emergency preparedness related to buy, then you should probably still buy some food. But for those of you who have disposable income still, this is the video for you. So we have Nintendo. I'm not sure if this is a Sega Genesis or a PlayStation. PC, Xbox, which one is the best? There's a few units here like the Max Oak and another unit, I can't quite remember what the heck it's called. It had some interesting specifications also in this class. But these are the most popular ones within the preparedness community. Two of these I've done detailed reviews on. That's the Apex, of course, and the Jackery. This was my wife for a couple years. This was my mistress. Now I have two more groupies. Actually, this one here I don't own. We sell Gold Zero at CanadianPreparedness.com and every three months we have to make sure that the batteries are topped up just to preserve the lifespan of the battery. Now, the only reason why we only sell Goal Zero is because that's the only company that has good supply and distribution here in Canada. Otherwise, I would sell all these units because they're all great units. They all have different X factors, different things which make them stand out from the rest. And of course, they all have their weaknesses, which we're gonna talk about today. So today we're gonna to do a comparison to see which one of these consoles is the best because this is really starting to seem like a console war. You know, you had your Goal Zero, who's been around since the beginning. Really, this probably should be the Nintendo, but because of the look of it and the power of it, the Yeti, Lithium, we're gonna call this the Xbox, okay? It's been around the longest. You know, it wasn't crowdfunded, they've been around for a long time, but you pay a premium for that. And as I'm gonna talk about, there's some downsides, of course. The EcoFlow Delta is the PC because it's far and away the most powerful unit. I shouldn't say far and away. Uh, none of these, they're all kind of within the same range, 1000 to 2000 watts in terms of storage and output power. But the EcoFlow Delta, you're getting probably the most powerful unit at the best price point. But there are some drawbacks. The Energy Apex is kind of like the Mad Max, okay? Because it's built for longevity. 2000 recharge cycles on the battery, and that is due to how the output power is regulated. The Jackery is kind of your weekend warrior family, plug and play, it's the Nintendo. It's the one you have fun with, you grab and go, you have fun with once in a while, but in the end, it's probably gonna end up in the dumpster before something like this. Now, before we talk about these, let's talk about the flex modular system that the Energy is coming out with. Now, with the Apex, they promised additional batteries that you could plug into this one, lithium batteries. And so what they decided to do instead was rebuild the whole thing from the ground up. The additional lithium batteries will still work with the Apex, so you can buy one of just the battery and use it with this. So essentially the Flex system is a modular, interchangeable system of three main components. So there's the brains, which is, you know, all of your outputs, your inputs, uh, the LCD screen, all that stuff. And then there's, of course, the batteries. And you can chain up to 96 of these additional lithium batteries. Each battery is one kilowatt hour. And they stack on top of each other and they all lock into each other. And you can also get additional MPPT charge controllers which are going to allow you to charge all of the batteries much faster. I believe it can achieve a full charge in up to an hour. 
You could charge it in multiple ways. It is going to be 1500 watts continuous output. Now the reason why this energy flex system may be game changing is because it's going to allow for infinite hardware upgrades. And what I mean by that is that right now it's going to come with the flex 1500 power console which is going to output 1500 watts. But say in the future they decide to come out with a 3000 watt power console or a 5000 watt power console, well you'll be able to buy just the console and not have to rebuy all the battery packs. It will be backward compatible with all of your battery packs. The batteries of course always have a life cycle which tends to go well beyond the power consoles becoming obsolete in the future. Because indeed, there's going to be 3,000, 5,000, even 10,000 watt lithium power consoles coming to the market at some point in the future. So this ensures that you'll actually be able to get the most out of the batteries that you buy because they will be backwards compatible with future power consoles. Now, this Energy Apex is rated for 500 and I think it's 550 watts output, but it's a 1500 watt inverter. So you can actually achieve 1500 watts output for short periods of time. Usually I was able to achieve it for between one to three minutes running those high drain devices. Now the reason why they do this is because they wanted to design the unit so that they could achieve those 2000 recharge cycles. But people complained because people wanted to be able to use 1500 watts continuous, even though this is only a 1.1 kilowatt hour battery. So that would mean that you would be discharging it faster than you could ever charge it because it can only charge at 500 watts an hour. So the actual applications that you would require something like that for, for extended periods of time, this size of unit or any of these units for that matter, are not really made for that purpose. So Energy decided to remove those fail safes because now you're going to have a much larger storage of power if you add on additional batteries. So that makes it more practical to use that amount of power for extended periods of time in a way which is not going to totally immobilize the unit by making it too heavy because the lithium, although it still weighs a lot, I believe each additional battery is gonna weigh 16 pounds. So if you were okay with your unit weighing 100 pounds and moving it around on a dolly, you know, you could potentially have six, 7,000 watt hours of power and use that for extended periods of time. Now that's a lot of power to be using for an extended period of time. Most refrigerators or most electronics in general aren't drawing that much power for extended periods of time like that. So I think that the flex specs are pretty awesome. I think if they can get the price point to where it needs to be, I'm gonna post a link in the description where you can go and place a pre-order for either the batteries, if you already have an Apex, or you can get the whole flex system itself. Now, let's talk about the differences between these. So Jackery, 22 pounds, Apex, 25 pounds, uh, EcoFlow Delta, I believe it is 30 pounds, and the Yeti 1400 Lithium is 45 pounds. So for the Jackery 1000, $1,000 USD, basically $1 per watt hour. Energy Apex, I believe it was around the $1,200 mark. It may have gone as low as $1,000 when it was still being offered. The EcoFlow Delta currently goes for $1,400 USD, and this has a 1,300 watt hour battery pack. So again, you're pretty much getting $1 per watt hour. The Yeti is gonna be around $2,100 USD. You're getting about 1,400 watt hours of power 1500 watts continuous. So in terms of the fastest charging units, the fastest charging by far is the EcoFlow Delta. We'll charge up to 80% in an hour. It's incredible. You can watch the thing charge up. That's a lot of power in an hour. But remember that comes at the cost of potentially putting your battery into ludicrous mode like a Tesla. You know, they have that mode where it allows you to discharge the battery or charge it up a lot faster. Unfortunately, that's going to wear down your battery a lot faster. So you're only getting between 500 to 800 charge cycles with this kind of battery. After that, the battery is around 60% of its original capacity. 
The Yeti charges the slowest, 25 hours. You can charge it by solar at around two to 300 watts, so you can get it much faster. Uh, the Apex via solar will charge rather quickly also. Two to three hours if you have your 500 watts of solar panels on here. Again, that requires good sunlight and five to 600 watts of solar panels. So what are the X factors with all of these? Reliability, power, longevity, plug and play. Ease of use, built like a tank. If I had to take one of these into a battle zone, it would be the Apex. The only problem I have with it is I don't like this handle. Yes, it's ergonomic, but I think this would be better served as aluminum or some kind of metal, just to kind of complement the rugged design. But that's not gonna change because this item has been discontinued. But I noticed they're using the same handle on the Flex. And I think that uh, that would be better served to something that doesn't have any play to it, that was just sturdy, like the Jackery. You just have more control over it if you do have to move rather quickly with the device. So it'd be nice to see that have a metal handle, especially if you're gonna be carrying a bunch of batteries hooked on underneath it, then uh, I'm not sure if I trust this, what looks like to be some kind of heavy duty nylon fabric. I don't really trust that. So I'd like to see that improved, but definitely, this is the one, because it's made of metal, you know, most of these, if you were to drop them or drop something on them, this is gonna crack, okay? Whereas with this, it's gonna dent, but it's still gonna last. EcoFlow Delta, obviously the most powerful device of all, but something I don't like about it is that it has all of the input and outputs on three different sides. So you have your AC and your DC output on one side, you have your USB on another, and then you have all your inputs in the back. So if you're buying this to save space, you'll probably want the screen facing forward. So if you had to plug something in, you got to go in through the back and then you got to charge it from the side. So it'd be nice if it had all of that stuff just on the front. That's one of the great things about the Yeti is that everything is right there in the front. It also has some storage in the top that you can put cords, accessories, your phone, anything like that. So that's kind of neat also. So everything's right there in the front. That's what I prefer. Uh, the energy doesn't really have that. It has the inputs coming in on the side and the output in the front, whereas the Jackery is all out the front as well. The EcoFlow, I guess, you know, they're trying to cram a lot of power into the smallest amount of space and I guess they have to make those concessions. Uh, the other thing with the EcoFlow is that it is the loudest unit. When it gets going, it's pretty loud. It's nowhere near as loud as a gas power generator. So, you know, first world problems. The other thing about the Apex, of course, is going to be the modularity. Now, EcoFlow is gonna be releasing another unit later this year also, which is gonna have modularity, but it's not gonna have the output power. So energy is basically going to achieve the power of the EcoFlow, but have the modularity and still the same rugged build as uh, the Apex did. So that's pretty neat. Now, in terms of the Yeti, it's arguably the best looking. It's the most reliable. Like I said, it has that compartmentalized storage, but some things that it lacks, of course, is that there are only two AC outputs. Now, of course, you can just use a power bar or you could use uh, some kind of splitter if you wanted to. So that's not a huge deal breaker, but it's kind of nice having that. Like, I mean, the Apex has six. Some people will say, well, you're never gonna use that many devices, but you know, there's a lot of different things which only take 50 to 100 watts. And when you have that many watts to play with, you very well can be using all those at the same time. You could have a laptop going, some lights, you could be charging. Uh, some batteries for a camera, charging a phone, flashlights, radios, a variety of things that you would need to charge via AC. So you can actually fill it up fairly quickly. So who are these units for? I would say that the Jackery is a good unit for the weekend warrior, you know, the small family going to the campsite for the weekend, going to the beach or something like that. I would say that the flex system is going to be more geared towards the prepper because it's built for longevity, once again. 
Uh, the only problem I have with that is that so far, at least with the Apex, it was only a one year warranty. The rest of these have a two year warranty. So I really think Energy needs to step up its warranty game if it wants to be consistent with the build quality. For the EcoFlow Delta, I see this as more of a upscale backup power in home power supply. Yes, you can take it out and do stuff with it in the wilderness, but it just doesn't seem to have a, a rugged enough feel to it that I would want to bring it out into the wilderness a lot. Mind you, all of these have places of ingress where it's going to collect dust or moisture. Uh, maybe it's more just the look. It has a much more finished look to it. So I shouldn't bash on it too much in that regard because you can definitely, you know, likely take this out and put it through a lot of the same abuse that as you would all of the rest of these. And it is quite streamlined. Also, the chassis is quite unibody in its build, whereas the Goal Zero, uh, even though it has more metal components, it has some aluminum components with the plastic, it's... You know, it's got a bit more going on here on the outsides and stuff. So that's something to, to keep in mind. But I still would say this is more of an upscale in-home bug-in power supply for the Suburban type. I would say that the Gold Zero Yeti is more for a semi-permanent installation. You can use that 1500 watt draw continuous. Mind you, you can only charge it at a certain rate. So even if you did use it 1500 watts continuous, if you can only charge this thing 300 watts an hour, that's all you're gonna be able to use an hour. So that was the philosophy with the Apex. And that is something that bears repeating. With the new Energy Flex system, you're gonna be able to do 1500 watts continuous and you're gonna have a much larger power supply with the Flex battery system. So for me, that kind of sounds like a game changer because the EcoFlow Delta is gonna have that capability, but it's not gonna be modular in the same way. The extra batteries are going to be something that's separate that you plug into, so it's not gonna be all one thing that snaps together like the uh, Flex system is gonna be. But Goal Zero, not to be outdone, will be coming out with a 3000 watt continuous output power model this year. It may already be out, but that of course is gonna weigh a ton because it's gonna have a lot more onboard power storage and it's literally probably gonna cost you an arm and a leg. I'm thinking probably between three to $4,000. That's just a guess, don't quote me on that. It could be cheaper than that. So which one is the best unit? It really depends. It really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something just for the weekend, Jackery. If you're looking for something rugged, rough and tough, go with the Apex. If you want something to power your video game systems in the comfort of your suburban home far removed from all of the looting and rioting and all that stuff, well, at least for the first few days anyways, this is the one for you. If you want something for the cabin, you know, some semi-permanent installation because you don't want to move this around a lot. 45 pounds, but something you know if you take out there, it's gonna work because Goal Zero has the track record, they have the reputation. Five years ago, if you had any one of these devices right here, people would be losing their minds because they're all fantastic units in their own right. It really comes down to your own personal needs in determining which is the best unit because they all have their pros and cons. So if and when this recession, or quite possibly depression, ever ends, which unit would you consider and why? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.